through no tongues. Yeah. No getting slain in the spirit. No barking. That's funny because that's what I said. Brother Anthony sitting back there. He didn't say I couldn't bark. <laughs> now you done went and ruined that. I can't do nothing. <laughs> Take your Bibles, if you would, to uh, to Psalm 84. Psalm 84. And it's always a pleasure to be here at the 10 meeting. And looking forward to hearing Brother Cole's uh, brother throw up here in a while. Uh, Psalm 84. And uh, I don't have a watch on me, and I'm being serious. If I get up to around 20 minutes, somebody throws something at me, wave at me, holler at me or something. I may not go nowhere near that long, but sometimes we get carried away. <laughs> All right, Psalm 84, verse number one says, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! My soul long with yea, even fainted for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and, and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee, Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, and whose heart are the ways of them. Who, passing through the valley of Baca, make it a well, the rain also filleth the pools. They go from strength to strength, every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, say yeah. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thy anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. Yeah. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk up brightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is that man, or blessed is the man, that trusteth in thee. Amen. Now, Father, I pray you might take uh, these words here tonight and be a blessing to these folks. Yes. We pray again, Lord, uh, for these folks singing tonight and, and for Brother Scurlock preach here to come. Uh, your blessing upon the service we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to preach to you just a few minutes here about God's house. About God's house. He says there uh, in that verse uh, down there about, uh, about God's house. And I know that uh, I know that I'm the temple of, uh, of the Holy Spirit. I know that God dwells inside of me. Yeah. I know that the buildings that we hold church service in—that's what they are. They're they're a building. Right. And uh, that you and I are the temple of God. He dwells in us that are saved and born again. Yeah. But yet we refer to to this tent here as as a church tonight. Yeah. Uh, uh, folks refer to that building over there as as the church of God and the house of God and those kind of things. And it's in that. It's in that uh, uh, frame of mind that I want to bring this to you tonight is in the sense of God's assembly, uh, the church. What a good place it is to be. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's a lot of places you could be tonight, but you're here. Yeah. And you come to a good place. This is a, this is a good place to come. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been saved. Uh, he gave me his date. I've been saved since July the 15th, 1983. I'm coming up on however many years that is. Not quite as long as he has been, but 30 some years I guess it is. I'm coming up on that. I've never been to church one time that I was sorry that I went. Amen. I've always got something from church when I go to church. When you go to preaching, prayer meeting, Bible study. God always gives you something. Now, I'd like to say this. In, in verse number one, it says, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. That amiable is a word. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's got its roots down there in, in pleasant. You know, Church is a pleasant place to be. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The assembly of God's people is a pleasant place to be. Yeah. And I know sometimes, you know, churches have their fusses and, their, and all those kind of things. But listen, in all the years I've been saved, there's been very few church services that haven't been a pleasant time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even yeah. when the preaching just peels your high and yeah. God gets yeah. all over you, yeah. and, and, and when, when the preaching's done and the invitation's given, and you look down and the, and the, and the, and the sermon's just ripped you all to pieces, Pieces, it's still a pleasant place to be. Yeah. Yeah. I like being in church. Yeah. God's house is pleasant. It's amiable. I look there in verse number 2 and it says, My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cried out for the living God. You ought to have a desire for God's house. Yeah. Amen. You ought to have a desire to be in God's place and in the in the assembly of the church. You ought to have a desire to be there. Yeah. Uh, I, I've asked uh, for various folks. I called Brother Cole and asked him to preach. I uh, asked him to pray for our for our deacon, Brother Mike Archer. And he's home, by the way. He got home uh, yesterday. And uh, and I don't know who all might have prayed for him. 
But, uh, but Brother Mike, uh, intensive care, the doctors told him uh, before they let him go, they said, listen, Mike, we, we didn't think we were going to save you. We thought you was too far gone. There wasn't no way he was going to make it. And I can't go into all, all the stuff he went through. But I went to see him today. I was sitting there on his front porch drinking a cup of coffee with him. And, uh, and I said something about seeing him in church later on. He said, what's the day? And I said, well, today's Tuesday. He said, well, I may try to be there tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, brother, I said, you know, okay, but this, don't get too big a hurry. We don't want you back in the hospital. Amen. But you know what that man has? He ain't been in church now. See, he was out all the COVID thing. I think he's been to maybe one or two services that we started back out after they maybe shut it down over there in Kentucky. And you know what he has a desire to be? He has a desire to be back amongst hey, God's people. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And we ought to have a desire to be there. Yeah. yeah. God's house is the best, best place to raise your kids. Yeah. Verse number three says, Yea, the sparrow hath found house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even thine all is, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. I can't think of any better place than to lay your young. Amen. Yeah. Right there on all. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. They born with you and physically bring them down and lay them on altar and say, God, I'm going to do the best of my ability to raise them for you. Whether it's something like that, or it's just between you and God Almighty, say, God, listen, you blessed me with a child. You've given me a child. We're yeah. going to give him to you. To the best of our ability, we're Amen. going to bring him up in the house of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You ought to be there Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and every yeah. night of your Bible Amen. meeting. Amen. Unless Amen. sickness or work or whatever legitimate reasons get in the way, them kids need to be brought up in church. Yeah. 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 Sometimes they'll stray away from that thing. Sometimes they'll get away from the way they was brought up and raised. But I'll tell you what I've observed over the years. Even those that get away from that thing, buddy, if God spares them long enough, they come back to that thing. Yeah. 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 That's not always the case. There's exceptions to the rule, but that just proves the rule. Yeah. Yeah. Church is a good place to raise your kids. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, they got all this uh, all this media stuff going on now, and I've heard some of the folks talking about, uh, you know, a lot of people's gotten used to going to church at home. Well, you know, that's all right and fine and dandy if you can't get out. But if you can get out, you know where you need to be? Yeah. 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 You can't get over a video screen or a TV yeah. Yeah. station or a YouTube or whatever. You yeah. can't get over that what you can get from yeah. here. Yeah. 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 I ain't against all those things. Use it as, you, as a tool as you need to use it. We used it during the shutdown period and all those kind of things. But listen, that can't replace this place. Yeah. 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 Your kids yeah. need to hear preaching and have an invitation given where they can come to the altar and get their hides right with God when they need to. Yeah. Yeah. Church is a good place, a good place to raise your kids. And then God's house is a place of blessings. Yeah. Yeah. We look there in verse number four and it says, Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. It's a law. Verse number five says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee and whose part of thy ways of them. Down there in verse number 12, we read over there in verse number 12, it says, O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. You know there's an awful lot of blessings that goes on around yeah. God's house. Yeah. 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 But it ain't nothing. They, they don't get much better than to, to hear the gospel preached and and the invitation given to yeah. see some law so get up and walk down an aisle and trust yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ and say yeah. that ought to be enough to get you through the prayer meeting anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Listen, when some straying saint of God maybe strayed away from the Lord and got out in the world and things and one church, some, some Sunday in church, he comes and hear the preaching and comes to an altar and gets right with God. What a blessed thing that is. Yeah. Yeah. To hear the word of God uplifted and the word of God exalted and hear Jesus Christ's name proclaimed and preached. What a blessed thing. Thing that is. Yes. Yeah. And I know you can preach anywhere and pray anywhere and all those kind of things, but there's just something about God's people getting together around God's yeah. word and the singing of the old hymns of yeah. faith Amen. and the songs that exalt and glorify Him that just knits a group of people together. And there's a blessing in there. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Amen. Blessing. Amen. You ought to come. You ought to come. You ought to come expecting a blessing. Yes. You know, uh, some folks don't get nothing from church because they don't come expecting nothing. That's a Amen. Uh, you bring those kids up, and you know, they, Mama, can I have a cookie? No, it's too close to it's too close to supper time to have a cookie. You don't want to ruin your appetite. This day and age we live in, a lot of God's people's ruined on sugar. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about in a spiritual sense of things. Yeah, yeah. they don't come, they don't get nothing from church because they, they don't come to church hungry. Right. Yeah. You ought to come to church, buddy, expecting yeah. God to give you something. Yeah. Yeah. You say, well, I didn't care much for that. Well, maybe that one wasn't for you. Maybe it was for somebody else. You know, a preacher, a pastor's got a group of people, whether it's whether it's 10, 15, 20, or 500, buddy, there's a whole flock out there that needs to be fed. Amen. 
And some Sunday, somebody else might just need it worse than you need it. Right. And maybe that sermon wasn't specifically for you. Maybe it was for somebody else that needed it just that day was for them. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a blessing there. Yeah. Yeah. God's house will place a blessing. You, go, you know, God's house makes the dry times better. Amen. That thing down there in verse number six says, you're passing through the valley of Baca. Baca, however you pronounce it. Make a well. The rain also fill up the pools. Now, I read a little bit about that thing, and they said it's a dry place. You know, sometimes in life, life's, life's just a dry place. Yeah, right. Sometimes you're going through things, boy, and, you know, you pick up this Bible and you read this Bible sometimes, and there ain't no fault in the Word of God. Sometimes the fault's in you and I, but yeah. you read through this book, and it's just like there ain't nothing coming from that book. Yeah, sir. Yeah, when you yeah. find yourself like that, you ought to get someplace saying, the Lord, there's something wrong here. I ain't getting nothing from that book. Yeah. If there's anything between me and you, God, let's get it fixed right here and yeah, right now because yeah. I want something from that oh, book. Yeah. 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 But sometimes life's dry. Sometimes it's dry. Yeah. And you know what I found? A lot of times when the week's going bad and maybe the work's been bad and maybe the farming's been bad and things are just rough and tough, you go to church on a Wednesday night in the middle of the week and there's something right there in the middle of that Bible yeah. lesson that yeah. nobody else got but you. Yeah, amen. Yeah. And God gave it to you. Amen. Because you showed up. Amen. Yeah. And if you hadn't showed up, you wouldn't have got it. Amen. Yeah. Dry place. Good. Church, the house of God's a place when things are dry. You can get a good fresh drink of water. God's house is a place of blessings. God's house makes a dry times better. You know, uh, uh, sometimes the sometimes the, the preacher's having a Bad day and a rough day. Sometimes, you know, preachers are preachers are human beings just like anybody else. Yeah. And we have bad days. Yeah. Now maybe you're different, but this preacher has bad days. Yeah. I don't know if other preachers are like this, but sometimes Sunday's a bad day. Yeah. For one reason or another. You know what's always a blessing? <laughs> to be in your in your church. <laughs> It don't happen. This ain't happen too often. It's always like being in church office on Sunday morning, right between Sunday school and Sunday morning church. Somebody comes in grumbling about something. Yeah. <laughs> what a blessing! Ah, what a blessing! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right before you get ready to get up and preach, somebody got to come in and just pour water all over you. Come on. Yeah. 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 Folks, if you got something to grumble about, wait till church is over. Yeah. 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 Take it to the altar. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you might take it there and get it fixed without having to go to the preacher. Yeah. 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 God's house makes us dry times better. God's house is a place of prayer and praise. Yeah. Verse number four says, Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, they will still they will be still praising thee. Say law. Verse number eight says, O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. You know, God's house ought to be a place of prayer. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Ought to be a place where God's people get together, have prayer meetings. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. I don't care how you do it. I don't care if everybody comes down around the altar. I don't care if you get down in front of your pews. I don't care if the men come and the women say, I don't care how you do it. That's between you and, and, and the preacher and God Almighty. But I'll tell you what every church needs. Amen. Every church needs a prayer. Yeah. 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 Church is a place to get together and pray. Yeah. Lift the sick ones up. Yeah. And lift the backslidden ones up. And lift, the, lift the lost souls up. And lift yeah. one another up. Listen, the best of saints need prayed for. Yeah. 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 The best of us yes, need pray for. I don't care who we are. God's house is a place of, of prayer. God's house is a place of praise. You know, there ought not be a service go by to where God's name is not praised. Amen. Yeah. Redeemed how I love to claim. Amen. Redeemed Amen. by the blood of the Lamb. Yeah, yeah. I, what a blessing. <laughs> Amen. God's blood, but He cleanses us from all sin. Amen. Praise His name. You know, this world, they don't have much for Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't know about around here, but down in Nashville, Kentucky is a good place to street preach. Of course, most of the response is nothing, but the good outweighs the bad. Yeah. Yeah. But still occasionally, you know, you get some heckler out there and stuff. They don't hear anything about God's book or God's word or any of those things. But God's, God's house is a place that you ought to be, come, be able to come in and lift up the name of Jesus Christ yeah. and praise Him for what He's done. Listen, yeah. folks, when God does something for you, tell somebody He does yeah. something. Amen. Amen. Maybe you can't. Maybe you can't tell them specifically what God done for you, and that's okay. But you can stand up, lift your head, and say, "Hey, folks, I just want to acknowledge something. God did something real special for me. Amen. 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 I just want to praise His name publicly." Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, we've got to move on. God's house is a place of prayer. God's house is a place of praise. God's house is permanent. Yeah. Verse number 10 says, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. A doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Some of us here, we've dwelled in the tents of wickedness. Yeah. And you know what I know about the tents of wickedness? They're just a temporary thing. Yeah. And there's somebody all the time setting up a new tent. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. New den of thieves. New place to just, you know, live for the live for the devil. Yeah. They're all temporary. Yeah. Listen, the church, the body of Christ, is forever. Yeah. 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 I'd rather be in this crowd tonight yeah. than any other crowd yeah. I've been in. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So well, there are hypocrites in the church. There's hypocrites in the bar too. Right. Yeah. 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 Buddy, this place here is a permanent place. The church of God is, listen, I know we're apostatized and laying a sea in church and all that stuff, but in the end of that thing, it's going to be glorified. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And all the differences are going to be put aside. Yeah. 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 All right, God's house is a protected place. Verse 11 says, The Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. God's house is a place to get light. You know, you can get light in God's house. Yeah. yeah. You get light. That book's being preached. You know what's coming out of that book? When that book's being preached, light's coming out of that book. Yeah. 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 Got to give you light. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody says, I don't know what God's trying to do in my life. I don't know what God's doing right now. I can't understand what's going on. Listen, go to church and get some light. Yeah. 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 Just about any major problem I've had in life in the 30-some years I've been saved, God's took care of it through somebody preaching or teaching. Yeah. Gotta give you light. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta give you light. It's a protected place. Yeah, bad things happen to God's people. You know why that happens? Because you're alive. Amen. Yeah. We all grow old. We all get sick. These bodies of ours, they're gonna fail us and all those kind of things. Bad things happen. People lose their jobs and all that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna tell you something. I'd rather go through the things God's people go through with God yeah. than to go through those same kind of things. Place of light. And in verse number 12, we'll surrender. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusted in thee. It's gained through trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. Amen. You know, when you get saved and you trust Christ, nobody realizes just what all they got into yeah. when you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Yeah. They ain't nobody understands all the doctrinal things that happened to him or her when they trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior. And all that stuff that goes on. Nobody realizes the family that they have gotten when they trust Jesus Christ as their Savior. Yeah. Amen. But you only get that through trusting Jesus Christ. Amen. That's right. You don't get that through getting baptized. You don't get that through joining the church. You don't get that through turning over a new leaf. Right. You don't get that through quitting your sin. You get that by trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Yeah. And that's the only way you get it. Yes. Amen. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. 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 Yeah. All right, Father, we come to you and thank you for your yes. mercy, God, and your grace be at the rest of the meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.